that's great. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We're just getting started here. I see someone up there. And we are live. How y'all doing? I am in rainy, windy Japan right now. Dealing with possibly terrible internet. Hopefully that's not going to be the case, though. Hey, everybody. Let me type a little message in there. Hello there. All right. Drop me a message to tell me if you can hear and see. And then we'll get started. Yeah, I'm in Japan right now. Uh, it's uh, just the beginning of the rainy season, so my room's kind of a mess. I didn't really have time to kind of do a little setup or anything like that. But yeah, I think we're gonna have a little fun here today. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, making maps really kind of in detail, uh, intricate maps. So I w I'm really excited to get talking about that. And uh, you can see right now I got my, uh, this is just the thumb thumbnail right here, but uh, we are going to work on this map, which really looks like a bag of garbage at the moment, but hopefully we're going to uh, make it a little bit more intricate. Let's zoom in here to the area that I was doing my details on earlier, All right? And yeah, how's everyone doing? If there's anyone in the chat, write me a little message there so I knows where's you zars. Yeah, maybe. And let's see here. All right, so I. Yesterday night, I spent some time setting up my uh, paint brushes that I want to use, and I think, yeah, this is the one that I want to use. So we're gonna try to do something uh, that's that's based in. So what I, what I wanted to do is one of these. Um, ah, shoot, I forget what they're called now, but um, ink uh, drawings, kind of. Uh, ancient, not ancient, but uh, old uh, Chinese or Japanese kind of style, just because it's a really cool style, and I thought it would be kind of fun to try. Uh, you can see I've divided my uh, drop into four panels here. Those represent uh, doors, like those sliding doors that you get in Japan, which is where I am right now. Um, Oh, no worries. Thank you, Diana. Diana, uh, join us when you can. Join us. That is the royal us. The royal we going on right now, because I think it's just you and I here at the moment, but I appreciate you popping in. Thank you very much. Um, where am I here? I want to go back to Photoshop. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, you can see there's these sliding door types. So it's going to be like a four piece kind of thing. And we're not going to finish today. That's for sure. We're going to be doing this uh, slowly over time. I'm going to try to get as much done here today as I can. And then uh, hopefully not hopefully, but I will, I'm going to continue uh, kind of updating and drawing, maybe make this like a weekly thing as much as I can, uh, so uh, we can uh, continue this over time. I, uh, I make a lot of 
no, sorry, I've made maps before, and which is what you can see in the uh, top corner here. Up on top is the my Breath of the Wild map, which was really fun to make, and maybe some of you know about it already. I um, I did this map. Oh, that's too big. A couple years ago now, I think. Well, the jeez, maybe like the fall. Anyway, the Inktober. Not Linktober, because I wasn't affiliated with Linktober yet at the time, but uh, the Inktober after Breath of the Wild came out, uh, we had these... Um, I did this, this map, and it uh, basically in-game, I went around in-game, and, uh, you know, because the game, you can climb up these mountains and just look and see everything, which is so awesome. So I did that in the game, and I looked on screen at what I saw, and I drew it down, and then I went down the mountain and up to another mountain or vista or tower or wherever, how, you know, as high as I could get to, and just looked and drew again. It was really difficult to do in some areas, like up on the mountains or uh, whatever, where... Uh, you know, there's a lot of cloud, there's a lot of fog, and you can't really see a lot of what's going on. That was pretty tough. Um, and those rainy days, too, when I couldn't actually get up the mountain. Um, yeah, it was freaking annoying. But it's it was really, really kind of cool to, like, try to do something like that. Because it's... That's kind of like how they used to make maps, isn't it? where they, you know, you just go up and draw what you saw, right? Before they had, like, satellites and uh, even airplanes or helicopters or, or whatever. You could take photos or video from above. You know, you just have to go up and survey things or, like, pace around a city and, and uh, you know, just kind of measure things out uh, that way as well. So it was a really cool experience. I really appreciate having had the experience here. Uh, and that, that took me like three months to do, I think. And I, I kind of penciled it out. I just I tried to pencil as much in as I could as I went along. Um, but then I, uh, at the same, I realized that like as I was drawing it, my hand was like erasing the pencil through like all my sweat and tears and blood and everything. So, and just the friction. So I decided, okay, I'm going to have to pen this in as I go along. Um, uh, and so that's what I started doing, and then it went a little bit more smoothly. Um, I had to make some, uh, you know, assumptions about where certain things were in some cases, just because, um, like I said, I couldn't see through the clouds or whatever. It was just a pain to, like, try to, like, see anything at all. And then, you know, you move to a new place, and all of a sudden... Um, everything is in uh, a different area and you have to kind of think, okay, this, what I drew here is that thing now. It's all in a different place because you're looking at it from a different perspective, right? Um, what I drew over there is that thing that I'm looking at there. So I can't draw that twice, but at the same time, I know that is this on my picture. So if I look at that here, I can see this area here and, and draw this thing that I couldn't see from the previous angle and kind of, you know, build on it in that way. So... So yeah, that's how that goes. And uh, then the second map that you can see... Ooh, it's getting windy. You can probably hear that. The second map that you can see um, underneath the Breath of the Wild map is my map of mainframe from uh, Reboot. This is my V262 turbo car from Reboot. I don't know. Some of you, uh, you, know, some of you guys know. This is uh, the first fully computer animated... Uh, cartoon from 1994. Apparently Donkey Kong Country came out before that, I think, but Reboot is way cooler. Sorry, Donkey Kong Country. I mean the cartoon Donkey Kong, not the video game, of course. Um, and I drew... That was a little bit different, because it's not a map so much as just like a, a shot, like a drawing of the city. It's not like top-down or anything. And it's not... You couldn't really use it as a map to like navigate your way around at all. But with the Breath of the Wild one, there's... um. Uh, you know, you can actually see little paths and things and kind of, like, figure out how you could, like, get from one area to another. But with the map of Mainframe, not so much a map as, like, a, um, like a drawing of Mainframe with a lot of, with all, like, as many vehicles and vid windows and, um, uh, what you call it, um, other things that I could, like, pack in there uh, as I could. And that... That, how long did that take me? I don't think it took me as long as the Breath of the Wild map. Because I 
could just use photos. Like, there's no... I, I, it was a little bit different because I had to use photos and screenshots of the city to kind of draw what I saw and everything. And in that sense, it was easier to do, um, but also more difficult because all the screenshots... I mean, this is a cartoon from 1994 to 2002, so before HD. Um, so... Yeah, you know, I couldn't really um, see a lot of detail unless, like, I got, like, this perfect shot where I could, like, zoom in here uh, and, like, see up close and whatever. Thank you. Someone's coming in. Thank you very much. Nice to see you there. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was a lot of fun to do. That maybe took me two months, I'm going to say. I could be wrong. It's all up on my website www.cameronohara.com if you want to check that out. Uh, all the step-by-step, -step, the weekly updates that I did about that. So yeah. So what we're doing today then, let me zoom out here so you can see the whole thing, and it really does look like garbage right now. This this is what I did last night, just to kind of get like a feel for how the map is going to look, uh, like the shape of the map is going to be at the end of it. I've got the... <coughs> I don't have COVID. I mean, I don't think I do. Sorry, I shouldn't joke about that. Um, I have the map of uh, the Game Boy uh, version of uh, Link's Awakening here, or I guess this would be Game. Would this be Game Boy Advance? I can't remember because uh, it's all in color, of course. And then I also have a low res version of the Switch uh, version which is the one that I played and just finished playing like a couple, three months ago now. Back in March, really fun game. I really like these uh, top-down Zelda remakes and, uh, and uh, you know, Link, Link's, um, what's it called? Link Between Worlds as well. That was uh, probably like my second favorite Zelda game after uh, Breath of the Wild. It was just so fun to get into. But anyway, this is just like the outline of what I'm trying to do. And over the weeks, I'm going to try to um, uh, get in more and more detail. You can, you can kind of see down in the bottom left corner here, we're getting some detail here. So I'm going to try to just like expand that detail all across the entire map. And like I said before, what I'm trying to do is this kind of, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this kind of uh, ink painted. Can you see this here? This is my reference book here. I don't, I don't really need to show you, but uh, uh, ink painted kind of style uh, of like landscape and stuff that uh, you know is traditionally Chinese or Japanese. Look at this art. Look, look at that and tell me that that doesn't remind you of uh, Breath of the Wild. There, I can't remember the region there, but kind of in the north, uh, the northeast there, where right before the uh, the scientists' uh, tower. I played the game in Japanese, so sorry. I I don't really know the English names of all the characters and locations um but yeah thank you very much linktober nice to see you there thanks for coming on and supporting uh me and all the other artists and for pulling this together and uh you know really like anyone who's watching this now or in the future when i post this uh back up on youtube um you know check out linktober it's um, a really great way to connect with uh, other artists and fans of uh the legend of zelda and uh, the folks there at Linktober are doing a really great job of like bringing people together. And it's really cool to be a part of this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, having me. Thank you, my friend. Hey there, Starry Sci-Fi. Thank you very much. Yes, artistic cartography. I'm glad you said that. That's, that's a really cool uh, way to put that, in fact. Uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And... To kind of get back to the map a little bit here, um, yeah, it's going to be that kind of impressionistic, like Chinese, Japanese impressionistic kind of style where it's really, there's a minimum on color and detail, but, but I am going to try to put a lot of bit of detail, a lot of bit of detail into this, and I want to, um, you know, with these, uh, a lot of these old paintings too, there's a lot of cloud cover see if I can find an example. Um, so you can't really see a lot of um, the image is obscured. Like, for example, this one, this is a waterfall, and it's just in the top, um, gosh, in the top uh, left corner that you have a lot of detail. 
and then it's just it fades into white the mist of the the waterfall or where's another good one here um, this one which is really cool also you have the 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 god rays coming in on the uh on the left side there uh, so you, there's a lot of play between like light, well, just just white, and the contrast between the the presence of something and then the absence uh, entirely of anything. So I'm going to play with that, but for now, what my goal is to do first of all is to uh, draw, just draw all the details and what I see in that kind of impressionistic kind of way, in kind of a realistic way, not realistic, but impressionistic. And I'm just going to put in all the details that I feel are appropriate. And then uh, over time, I'm going to start to kind of like fade out and play with the contrast. Um, the thing about drawing a game map is that pretty much everything on the map is relevant, right? So it'll be interesting for me to kind of go in and try to decide, you know, what... Uh, isn't relevant, what I should try to get rid of when I uh, start to, you know, play with that aspect of it. You know what I mean? So, anyway, that'll be pretty cool. So I'm going to try to focus a little bit more here. I've been talking a lot. Thank you all again for coming in. And... Yeah, I need to focus, because this, you really do need to focus doing this kind of thing. It's a, the way that a lot of the lines work in this kind of stuff, too, is that you have, like, uh, where's, I need, like, a good kind of, here, we'll work with this area here, this hill. You have, um, you need to work the contrast in the brush, right? So, not that I'm an expert at this at all, but, uh, so you have, like, the thicker and thinner lines, but also the... How can I say? They kind of, a lot of the lines kind of start, they kind of go in these like concave kind of motions, especially when you, you get into drawing trees in detail and stuff like that. So like this thing that I just drew here could be like a little branch with things like that, uh, with smaller branches and things. I'm doing a terrible job of this right now, but you have like a little concave thing and then the joint and then another concave line and another joint or something like that and then maybe kind of double that up with another line uh, if I were using a paintbrush that'd be a little bit easier but it kind of grows out like that right which is pretty cool um, however I am doing I'm drawing mountains right now which are their own thing and trying to kind of get yeah, I don't like that line here just get rid of this whole thing I went the wrong way way of doing this, but you have to really get the shape of the mountain. Because right now, this mountain, this hill, it's not a mountain, it's a hill, but the way it's shaped is, the way I've drawn it, rather, is it looks like it's one, two, three mountains that are really close together. And in fact, I don't like this right here. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, but what I really want to do is have it more have it look like it's more connected and I don't know yeah you know what I think I might have to redo this whole thing if I want that to be the case yeah I think I'm just gonna redo this whole thing because it's not gonna work the way I want it to unless I do all right I'll just, I'll leave the, the ends here a little bit. But yeah, for anyone just tuning in, this is a, a project that I'm not going to be able to finish today, but I, I just wanted to show, you know, the start and kind of get myself set up to kind of continue later on because, um, yeah, um, let me re-rail re, re, uh, re, uh, my train of thought there. Uh, I'm going to start this today. There's no way I could finish this whole map in one hour, which is what I got right now. Um, but just want to kind of show you the process of like making a map like this, uh, you know, how I do it anyway, and um, to kind of get started. And, you know, hopefully maybe I'll see some of you again 
uh, in the future when I do future live feeds uh, with this uh, doing this kind of map making thing uh, yeah I'd really like that I'd like to see y'all again and I will definitely continue doing this this is uh, I, I try to do this like once a year now because last year I didn't do one because I didn't have time but in 2000 and or maybe I did do it oh gosh I can't remember the years anymore but first I did the Breath of the Wild map which again you can see in the top uh, right corner and then I did the map of mainframe which you can see just under that map of uh, BOTW um, and then now this is my third large-scale map like this that I'm doing I also did a, a map of uh, Ocarina of Time a uh, map of Hyrule but it was and it was all of memory because you know we've all played that game to death I know I have anyway and uh, because it's so awesome so I just drew that all from memory over the period of like a week or something. It really didn't take me nearly as long to do. Uh, but if you count that, I suppose this is my fourth, my fourth map. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this, I think. Ooh, draw some lines and stuff. And um, like I say, it's not going to look like much right now. Uh, because you're kind of up close looking at all these kind of unfinished details and things. Right now I'm really just trying to get like a feel for uh, how things, how I want things to look eventually. I'm not going to draw any trees or anything like that. Right now my focus is really to uh, get a feel for uh, the landscape and the shape of the hills and uh, the cliffs coming up from the coast, like what I'm doing right here. Um, so that after I kind of go through the entire map and do uh, set details, I'm going to uh, come back and uh, go put in all the trees and all the houses and that castle right in the middle will be a lot of fun to do as well, I think. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Let's draw a little, draw some islands off, off the coast here, right? Some little rocks or whatever. I guess they're not big enough to be islands, but yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. And actually, yeah, I think for the front face of these ridges, I'm just going to leave them a little bit bare. Uh, and I'll work when I eventually, which will be the last step, get into doing the color and stuff. That will be uh, the last thing that I do. And I really like, it's fun, drawing the mountains is really fun, but also drawing the little lakes like this thing here. Uh, this is more of a pond than a lake, and I'll have to fix that to kind of reflect it, but yeah, that's a lot of fun to do here. I don't like, I don't like this shape here, I'm going to erase this. So anyway, how are you all doing over there? How's everyone... Uh, out on the internet. How are you doing with uh, COVID? How are you doing with uh, all the the protests and everything that are happening across the across the world? I'm speaking of. I think it's really awesome to see people coming together in the way that they have to kind of fight racism and uh, oppression. The systematic racism that's uh, that has been so that's just entrenched in uh, you know so much of what we do without some of us even realizing it you know it's so refreshing to see people working together to kind of try to put a stop to that oh you know what I just realized my f my pen has crapped out on me here. And it's not responding to my... Oh, there we go. Okay, got it back. I'm working with a tablet right now. It's a bamboo Wacom tablet, which uh, I've been working with these tablets for a long time. They're a lot of fun to work with. And of course, they're pressure sensitive, so that's how I can get the variation in uh, the size of the brush that I'm using here. This hill is going to grow into trees here, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draw the whole hill here. There we go. Um, what 
did I draw this hill here? What is this? Why did I draw that there? I don't think there is a hill there, is there? I'm going to erase that. This section right here, where I'm just erasing now, that would be a good place to put in the clouds, because that's kind of an area that doesn't need to be uh, highlighted. Okay, where am I here? Let's, let me go back down here again. There we go. So I played this um, Link's Awakening uh, for the first time. I'll worry about that side of the border later. For the first time when it came out on the Switch. So I was all, I know a lot of people were, well, some people were not so excited about coming into uh, play this game again because it's a remake and all this kind of stuff and I, I understand that but for me I was really excited because I, I had just never played it before and I liked it a lot and unfortunately can someone like tell me what, what is up with the Switch and its controller trouble like I died so many times playing I was playing on hard mode from the beginning by the way um, and I guess it was doubly hard because you know, the Switch controllers have that stick in the left uh, Joy-Con where, um, you know, it moves without any input being put in at all. And that was so annoying. I just died so many freaking times because of that. That was like... that unfortunately kind of soured my experience a little bit I think um, as much fun as I had playing it but you know of course that's not the game's fault of course um, but um, yeah it was a really fun game I think I enjoyed playing um, uh, links link between worlds a little bit more and I'd have to really go back to, to that game to say why it was that I had more fun with it. But, I don't know, what, what do you all think? Did you... which one do you like more? Because they're pretty similar games. They're modern, uh, top-down Zelda games, right? One is a remake, and one was almost a remake. But what do you think about those two games? Which one... Which one do you prefer? I think, I don't know what it was. What was it exactly? I, I just remember playing Link Between Worlds and um, just everything was just so intuitive and I could just like play for hours and hours on end without you know, getting tired or getting stuck. I think I've, I've definitely, you know, gotten a lot better at Zelda games over the years, too. So maybe that's that's partly what it is. I've been replaying Skyward Sword recently, and it's a lot... I've just kind of gotten to know... <laughs> I don't know, maybe with, with with age comes wisdom or something. I'm not sure what it is, but just the, the puzzles just aren't as challenging as they were before. And, of course, I've done them once already before as well. So there's that, too. But... Uh, um, yeah, something about Link Between Worlds that I just really, really, really enjoyed. Alright, I think I'm good with the landscape down here. I don't like this big thick line right here, so I'm going to erase that. Do, do, do. Yeah, so I've been replaying Skyward Sword lately, um, and you know it's funny because like it's for the Wii, and you had to play with the um, what's it called? I got it right here. The the motion. Anyway, I had to get one of these bricks. It's not a brick. One of those little pieces for my uh, nunchucks there. After like I had I had had a Wii U I, I've or a Wii rather this whole time, but. I, I got rid of um, my a lot of the parts to the system when I upgraded to the Wii U, 
which is a fine system, by the way, and I wish it got more love. But, you know, that's how it goes. Um, and so, like, I kind of, unfortunately, I kind of sold off so many things that I, I found that I just wasn't able to play Skyward Sword anymore because I didn't have the proper uh, nunchucks and, and all this stuff. Uh, I think I'd even gotten rid of the um, that uh, sensor bar that you stick on top of your TV to play. Um, but, um, yeah, I started, uh, so, so what I'm trying to say here is I had to rebuy, repurchase all that stuff. Man, Nintendo, you are, you are so good at getting me to spend money. So good at that. And, yeah, so... Let's talk about Skyward Sword, since this is where we are right now. Skyward Sword is a good game. These are my opinions. Um, it's not the best Zelda game, I, not at all. I think um, it kind of feels like... I like the, the idea of like the whole world map, as opposed to being up in the sky, being a dungeon, basically. Like The minute you set foot, foot on the ground, you're basically in a dungeon, in that... You know, it's all it's all puzzles and stuff that you have to figure out, um, and you know, fight enemies and, and this sort of thing. It's, ba it's you're not in a dungeon, but like in, you know, uh, you're in a dungeon, right? Sketchy GL, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Let's see a little bit more uh, action in the comment section here, eh? And this is me writing in the chat. Let's get this party started. How old am I now? How old am I now? Please forgive me for saying lame things from the 90s. My brain, the resources in my brain are currently being allocated to drawing this thing right now, so I can't really be exceptionally clever at, this, at the moment. Uh, everyone in the chat, what is your favorite Zelda game? I'm kind of rambling on about my experiences, but uh, what Zelda games do you like? What are your top three Zelda games? And I'll just throw mine out there. My top one is definitely Breath of the Wild. No ifs, ands, or buts. Breath of the Wild is the best. And Breath of the Wild 2 may surpass that when it comes out, I assume, next year, because Zelda games kind of come out once every two years. Um, oh, Pretty good. Got some food cooking. Can't wait to sit down and enjoy while watching. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Help yourself to your food. You know, don't feel like you have to uh, constantly be here. Just kind of pop in and out as you can. Uh, do what you need to do. We all got. To, we all have to live our lives. So, yeah. Um, but your support is very appreciated. Um, Breath of the Wild is my favorite Zelda game. Next. I already said is probably uh, Link Between Worlds. Um, and finally, maybe Wind Waker or Wind Waker I had a lot of fun with. Is it my favorite? My third favorite? Maybe? Mm, hard to say. Hard to say. Hard to say. Although Majora's Mask uh, is a really... Oh, my pen crapped out on me again. It's not sensing the pressure again. Come on, man. Give you a little breather there, computer. Maybe we're getting a little bit hot. Majora's Mask is not my favorite game to play because of all the time travel. It's kind of kind of mm, boggles my mind, but it's definitely a really cool Zelda game, and I really appreciate a lot of the stuff that they did with it. I just like the creepy nature of it. That's, that's a really cool thing about Zelda games, hey, is that you get stuff happening in Zelda games, isn't there? All right. Starry Sci-Fi says, BOTW, Wind Waker, and A Link Between Worlds. Oh, we got the same top three. That's awesome. Sketchy GL says, Minish Cap, BOTW, and Twilight Princess in no specific order. All right. That's cool. Minish Cap. That's one game that I have not played that I would like to play. I haven't played the older... Uh, handheld Zelda games. Like I said, I, I just played uh, Link's Awakening for the first time when it came out on the Switch here. 
Twilight Princess. Let's let's talk about that. Uh, Majora's Mask is a gem, right? It's also the first game I beat before my big bro did. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. That's memorable. Whoa, the house is all creaking here because of the wind. Um, what what did you all think of Twilight Princess? Because I I need to replay this game. I need to replay this game. I'm gonna get uh, the HD version for. Um, my uh, Wii U here and revisit it. I think I need to give it a second chance because the first time I played it, something just didn't sit quite right with me about it. Oh, this is a different night. Oh, no. Ah, it's a frozen again. Come on, wake up. Wake up, wake up. Wait a minute, what layer am I on right now? Oh, what layer am I on right now? That's so weird. Oops. Oh, wow. That's fine. I'll just merge. Merge layers, please. I'm not doing the water right now, anyway. Yeah, did did y'all like Twilight Princess? I know it's uh, it's a really popular Zelda game, but somehow I just I think what really kind of mm, what's the word um kind of hampered my enjoyment from the get-go was the controls. I played it. I didn't play it when it came out. I played it on the Wii. On the Wii. Ah! I want to say after I played Skyward Sword. So I might have been... Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's right, that's right. Because they had, like, the kind of sword fighting stuff a little bit, but not to the extent that um, uh, Skyward Sword did. So, you know, that's, I don't know, I think I was kind of, yeah, I, I just, I want to replay it and see, see how it holds up now, especially, the, you know, since I haven't played it in HD yet. Okay, we're up on the mountains now, this is great. I really like how this looks from the side here. Yeah, it was definitely a strange game. We're playing it now, and the plot pacing is kind of funky. Okay, music is amazing. Yeah, the music is really good. And, okay, I love Midna. Midna is my favorite sidekick uh, character in Zelda. I love Midna. I absolutely love Midna to death. Like, she, she, I would play that game again just for her alone, and maybe that's why I'm going to play it again. Um, Midna is so cool. Uh, the story is intriguing, yeah. The story itself is intriguing. Although the pacing, I agree, with starry sci-fi is a little bit strange. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't like the King of Red Lions that much. Ah, oh, thank you, the Wii controls are janky, right? Okay, it wasn't just me. The GameCube version was better, eh? Okay, okay, I'll play the HD remake then. I'll, I've, I've been looking around for it uh, when I go to used places these days. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad. I, I felt kind of sacrilegious saying that stuff about, uh, you know, such a beloved game. But, yeah, something about that, yeah, it just didn't, didn't quite work with me somehow. Okay, here we are. Look at, I like the, the tops of these mountains here. That looks pretty good, hey? All right, now we got this swamp here. Uh... And actually, uh, as I'm doing this, you know, I'm going to play. Last night I drew the, um, where is it now? I drew the, the outline of the map like I showed you before. So I'm just going to play this in the background so you can kind of see uh, what I was doing with it last night. You can see that there, right? Eh? It's all sped up. It should be like a two-minute video or so. Um, so that was me doing that yesterday, just trying to get a feel for the area. Yeah, this is a swamp, so it shouldn't be too deep down. It's a swamp, so... Yeah, then we got... The first temple agonizing in Twilight Princess. That mountain is wonderful. Yeah, I remember having trouble with that... Um, first 
temple. And, you know, I think, yeah, another part about the controls is just, like, moving Link around. Like, he didn't, like, with, like, kind of small things, small movements, if you wanted to make, like, to kind of reposition yourself to climb a ladder or, like, turn around to, like, push something. Like, he just kind of didn't go where I wanted him to go. Stuff like that, you know? Okay, let's go up here. Let's sit on top of these mountains. Ah, uh, you know what would have been really cool is to, like, draw... this uh, island from the viewpoint of these mountains. That would have been pretty cool, actually. Maybe some other time. I'm dreading, absolutely dreading, drawing the map for um, BOTW2. That, because, because, you know, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be a bigger map than the original one. You know what I mean? So if it took me three months to draw the original uh, Breath of the Wild map, it's going to take me six months to draw that one, I bet you. Sheesh. And by the way, I'm right now I'm drawing this on the computer, right? I'm using Photoshop to to draw this map right now. But the other maps that I've done are were all hand-drawn. Um, I'm just doing it on the, on the computer today because... Um, uh, I needed a good setup to kind of showcase what I'm doing right now. I don't really have the, I don't really have a good enough camera to like film overhead what I'm like drawing below on the table. So <clears throat> all those other maps I did by hand. Um, anyway, there we go. Yeah, that's looking it's starting to look a little bit better here, right? With all that detail. You know, this is kind of bad to say, but like you, you can draw pretty much anything. Like, look at look at this. It's just basically like squiggles, right? But like, you put enough squiggles in in the right place, and it starts to look like something, and it starts to look pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> all right, I think. Wait, let me let me let me zoom out here a little bit. Yeah, no, I should put some more detail in. Okay, 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 okay. I know what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to. These mountains are gonna kind of slowly come down like this into the forest here, and maybe I'll even do like like a little hill here or something like that. There you go. Okay. So these lines that I've just drawn now um, are going to guide my. And I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the map. They're gonna guide my pen here as I kind of go down here. These are gonna be like kind of. Let's make this brush a little bit bigger. Um, what then is your least favorite Zelda game? It's it's fun to talk about your favorite Zelda games. We all love Zelda games, right? That's why we're here. But I I like not to like rag on the series or anything like that because it's so it's so awesome. But I just it's interesting to talk about the the uh, aspects that we don't like as well, just because it kind of it says something about what we do like about our favorite games, you know, like. The, the controls in Breath of the Wild, I was talking about controls in Twilight Princess, we were all talking about that, and um, how they don't quite work. But to compare in Breath of the Wild, the controls really freaking work and are just spot on. Uh, same thing with um, Link Between Worlds, I think, too. And also maybe why I didn't enjoy... Uh, playing Link's Awakening so much because, like I said before, the Switch has that controller trouble. And if anyone knows how to fix the Switch controllers, let me know because it's a real pain in the butt to deal with all the time, right? So what are your least favorite Zelda games? I think... Yeah, I'm gonna go over a lot of these lines a second time. 
um, with a thinner brush once I've done it. I'm going to erase that a little bit. There we go. But this game, I did enjoy this game though. It was a lot of fun. I really like the art style. I really like being able to play. And the Nintendo does do a really good job at the nostalgia thing. Like it's never too much, but it's definitely there. And you don't, of course you don't need to have played any of the previous games to really get it, but like you get it when you have, you know? And um, the way that they incorporated the, the Game Boy uh, sounds into the music and uh, even some of the uh, sound effects too I think it's really fun for uh, Link's Awakening uh, not to mention all the little like Mario characters and stuff inside you know what I mean in the game at least that's hard um, I love them all in their own way, but I don't find much replay value in Phantom Hourglass, A Link Between Worlds, and Ocarina of Time. I don't dislike them a lot, sure. That's fair, I, I get that. Um, Phantom Hourglass, yeah, I tried to replay that once, but I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't get there, you know? Um, they don't attract me like some others, yeah. That's totally fair. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned Ocarina of Time because I've played that game, oh my gosh, like pretty much every release, every release that that game had, I played it again. And then multiple times more when I was a kid in high school and it was like the only game that I, I had <laughs> to play for a while. I played the crap out of that game trying to find, you know... People said that you could find the Triforce if you did X, Y, and Z, and I tried to do all those things, tried to get outside the world map and find that Triforce uh, on the other side of the, you know, the, the walls around Hy Hyrule Field. Trying to find all the secrets, all the Skulltulas for sure. That was a lot of fun for me. I enjoyed doing that kind of thing. And uh, now I think I pretty much exhausted my replay, <laughs> the replay value of that game for myself. Because I've just played it so dang much, but but that being said, like even like just recently, I've been kind of like feeling, oh man, I would kind of like to revisit that game, if I could play it on my TV. I don't want to play a handheld game. I want to play an HD Ocarina of Time, like uh, some of the um, what's it called, uh, Unreal Engine uh, things that uh, people have put up on YouTube and whatever. Finally, back. Welcome back, Diana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're just talking about our least favorite Zelda games, but you don't have to be so negative like I am. You can talk about your favorite one as well. Uh, Ocarina was the game that introduced me to gaming. Yes, yes, it has a special place, but I've overplayed it. I enjoy the Master Quest now and then. Yes, the Master Quest was a, a, a breath of fresh air, for sure, uh, when I replayed that. Um, yeah, so I remember playing... Playing Ocarina of Time for the first time and like that whole jump mechanic thing where you can't jump unless you approach a ledge and then you jump automatically. Whoa, that was some. That was crazy. That was crazy. Talk about leap of faith. Leaps of faith in gaming. You know what I mean? That was pretty cool. Um, and uh, I, that was actually my first Zelda game. And what got me into the series. And I, I, the next one that I played after that, jeez, it would have been a while. Because I kind of fell out of gaming for a while after that. But um, I probably, that's a cool kind of tiger stripe pattern on the mountains there, right? You know what's, oh, what's what, Skyward Sword, the next game that I played? Jeez, it might have been. Sorry, uh, Diana, if I'm mispronouncing your name, by the way. I'm not sure if it's Diana or Diana. Wait, Diana is a different spelling? Sorry. Sorry. Please correct me if I'm being an asshole. What did I play after that? What did I play after Ocarina of Time? 
Because I didn't have a GameCube. I didn't play Majora's Mask right after that. The next system that I owned, I think, was a Wii, so it might have been Skyward Sword, but I'm pretty sure I played some handheld Zelda in between. It was fun, though, coming back to Zelda after all those years, and, like, they had made all these games, and I could kind of re approach everything everything like I had all these games to play it's like if they released like a a truckload of like Zelda games all at once and and you can just kind of have at them as you want that was what it was kind of like to me <clears throat> okay new question then what is a, a good Zelda clone or you know Zelda like game that you would recommend Spirit Tracks. Yeah, Spirit Tracks. I, I didn't finish Spirit Tracks. Um, I found it super cheap just like maybe last year or something. I got it for like 300 yen, which is about three bucks at a, a really cool uh, used game place over here. I didn't finish it, but I enjoyed that game. I enjoyed it. Both are correct pronunciations. Thank you. Good. My least favorite. That's a very hard one. Yeah, you don't have to answer. You don't have to have a least favorite Zelda game. Don't, don't uh, feel like you have to answer there. But what's a what's a good um, Zelda clone or Zelda like game? I played, uh, and even did a little um, let's play for a little while of Hyper Light Drifter, which you can play on the Switch now. Actually, I played it on Steam first, but you can play it on the on the Switch too. And that's a really cool, top-down, explorative, puzzle-based? There's not, not so many puzzles in that game, actually. It's more combat and exploring, uh, you know, a, a lot more exploration. That's a really fun game, though. The really cool thing about Hyperlight Drifter, if you've never played it, is the lack of language in the game. There's no language in that game. You, um, it's, it's a really follows the uh, show-don't-tell rule really dang well. Um, in that you have to kind of look at the environment and look at the expressions or the gestures or actions of the characters in the town to be able to guess what they want. Um, all the, There's no text in any of the menus or anything like that. Uh, no, that's not true. In the opening menu, there's text to get you started off. You know, when you choose your uh, new game or set the options or whatever, but that's a really intuitive and fun game to play, and I really recommend that if you've never played it before. How about how about you folks? What is a uh, not Zelda game that is kind of like Zelda that you would recommend? Transistor. Oh, Transistor. I've not heard of that. Is that what's that about? I haven't played any Zelda clone games, but that sounds fascinating. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good games. It's really cool. And um, what I really like about being a part of the Zelda community is that how groundbreaking Zelda is and has been to gaming. And, like, I, I guess it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I was, I was here before it was cool kind of thing, which is such a, well, you know, it is what it is. But I just feel kind of, like, proud to, like, have been a part of the Zelda uh, you know, gaming community, and proud to be a fan for so long because of how it has shaped the gaming industry and how you can see it too. That's pretty cool. Um, Journey, Journey, Journey. Is that the one where you are the uh, in the desert and you're that little little uh, guy with like the the red cape and you're kind of like jumping around and there's no text or anything. It's really kind of ambient music and stuff. And there isn't really any fighting or anything either. Is that the one? Because if so, that is a really cool game. I really like that game too. I think I think the Japanese title was like Tabibito or something like that. I could be wrong. So I'm not sure what the English title was. Sorry. Somewhere around here is a cave entrance. There it is. It's on the next page, on the next uh, thing. Uh, for those of you who weren't here when I first started, uh, what I'm doing here is, um, you know, those uh, Japanese sliding doors. Uh, I'm going to draw like one, two, three, four doors um, and then connect them all, of course, into a big uh, mural here. That's what I'm trying to do. 
Um, so I'm also going to have like little door, not doorknobs, but like handles where you, you know, push and pull the door probably like, like uh, right around here. So I was hoping to try to get those done before um, the, uh, I started actually drawing the map like this, but I just did not have the time to do it. So uh, let's see here. These mountains are going to go down to the forest, but let's focus on the swamp here a little bit. So what? What are these things in the swamp? I guess they're like branches or something? Hmm, okay. Part of this too is you have to kind of think about how you would draw something, which is why I'm just focusing on one landscape element at a time. Um, Cause like, how are you going to draw the lines of the mountains? How are you going to draw the lines to shape the hills and stuff like that? And then, you know, you can figure that out and then do it. And then the trees, there's so many different ways you could draw trees. The, the, the distance that I'm drawing from, I don't want to do too much detail in the trees. Um, so I might just, you could just do kind of like, uh, a little thing like this with like lines going across for like pine trees and do a lot of those like really slow. Or you could do something like I was talking about before, more intricate. It's like a joint and then a joint and then a joint like that. And you get all the branches. I won't do something like this just because it's so far away. And uh, there's no way you'd be able to see this much detail. I really like this brush. It kind of like bleeds a little bit after you've finished drawing on it. That's really cool. But anyway, I'm just really realizing what the time is. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, it's an isometric view ARPG with sci-fi theme. Story is a bit hard to explain, but there's skill trees and some really nice graphics. Okay, cool. Sounds good. I'll check it out. Journey, hey? And uh, the other one you all mentioned, uh, Sketchy, you mentioned Transistor. I'll check it out. Sweet. Thank you very much. But we're, we're going to wrap things up here because uh, my time slot is done. I guess I could keep on doing this if I really wanted to and it wouldn't affect anything, but I, I'm not sure, so I'm going to just uh, chill and peace out here. Um, got my Zelda shirt on there, represent. Um, this is the shirt that I like to wear for work because it's a polo shirt, so I can get away with it, but it's also like Zelda, so that that's awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for like coming here. I'm going to put this uh, uh, video up on YouTube. Um, so you can come back and rewatch it later. And I'm also going to uh, continue to do little, like, maybe hour or half hour long sessions, uh, kind of drawing this map out uh, online, live streams here on YouTube, same place. Um, uh, maybe the same time. It's a pretty good time slot for me over here. It's like uh, it's noon right, uh, right now in Japan. So, um, yeah, come on back in the future. We'll uh, do a little bit more of this, uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, you know, check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my website is uh, CameronOhara.com. Twitter is uh, CameronOhara uh, L-U-V. My ins oh, sorry. Yeah, Twitter is CameronOhara L-U-V. Uh, Instagram is CameronOhara C-D-N for Canadian, which is where I'm from. Um, yeah, come back and watch the rest. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure some of you are also artists here on uh, Linktober. So uh, if you're doing something, like message me your uh, live stream, uh, sorry, live stream details, and I'll check it out. Um, uh, if you have anything else you're, pro you're promoting or anything, you know, let me know. I'm really wanting to like connect with other artists here uh, on Instagram and whatever, uh, you know, Twitter. Um, so yeah. Peace out. Thank you very much, everybody. That's the chime outside. It's 12 noon. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for complimenting my shirt. Uh, give me a sub. Yeah, uh, catch some of those streams. I do other videos on uh, YouTube as well regarding Star Wars and Reboot and occasionally Zelda. So check them out. And thank you very much, everyone, for coming in. Have a safe week with Corona. Uh, if you go out and protest, be safe there, too. Uh, and, you know, keep on being yourselves, everybody. Peace. The Force, the Triforce is strong with all you. Good night, good day, goodbye.